Okay, right now I'm going to introduce you to two collaborative tools that are built right into your browser, I'm assuming you add them on. Um, the first one I'll talk about is called Wikialong. It's very quick, very simple. I'd probably use it with younger students. Um, so you can go to Firefox and add it on. I've put the web address in your resources sheet. So if, and then to actually access it, if you go up here into View, where it says Sidebar, in the pop-up menu, you can see Wikialong right there. So click on that. And you can see that you actually get a sidebar that pops up alongside the web page. Um, and if anybody else had commented on, on this page, their comments would be there. Uh, I'm going to type in a comment here that says... I think this would be great to include in our wiki, or is it too wordy? Okay, I'm going to save that. You can see it changes. It says who posted the comment. Um, if I go away and then come back to it, you can see the comment is still there, and anybody who comes along with Wikialog in or Wiki along in their browser can see the comment. Okay, and students can have conversations back and forth. I think this could be a great tool for teachers as far as like doing maybe a sort of Da Vinci Code kind of treasure hunt, uh, leaving questions for students on websites that they have to answer. Um, and so, as you can see, that's a pretty simple one to use. Uh, the other one we're going to talk about right now, let's get rid of this, is Digo. Digo's my favorite, but it's a little more complicated. That lets you do some really amazing things. So, as you can see, I've already added it here into my browser, and it has its own toolbar. There's also a little thing up here called Digolet that we'll talk about at the end that's a little easier to use. So, it might be good for middle school students. Um, although, personally, I don't see why they couldn't use this other browser. I'm not sure how they're that different. Anyway, so we have this website, and we want to share it with some group for, say, a wiki we're working on. And there's one particular bit I like. So I'm going to go in and highlight that the way I would anything else, and then come up here to the Digo toolbar and click on Highlight. You can see that it changes color. And, and I get the little note up there that just disappeared. It says bookmark saved. And we'll talk about what that does in just a second. So if I come back down here and move my cursor over the highlighted part, I get this little pop-up menu. And if I click on that, it gives me several options. I can forward it, blog about it, delete, copy, whatever. We're going to add a sticky note. And the sticky note pops up. Um, I can type in my message. I think we should include this in our wiki. Okay. Then it gives me the option to keep it private or to share it with a group. And I've made a group called Pit Techies. Um, I can bookmark it if I want to. I'm not going to. And I can save. Okay. Now anybody else who comes along, like people in my group, um, when they roll their cursor over that, you can see the message will pop up. Okay, and they can add their comments. Are you nuts? Whoops. Are you nuts? This is stupid. Of course, we would be talking about netiquette in the classroom, but... Okay, and then if I roll over it, both those comments come up, and they can actually carry on a website, a conversation right on the page. How cool is that? Now, what else it does, let's get rid of this, is, you know, when you add Digo, it'll create your own little site like you would have with Delicious or Furl. And if you go up here under My Bookmarks and click on that, you can see all the, all the highlights I've had have created their own little bookmarks. And I can either click on those individually, or if I want to go to the archive, I click on my bookmarks, and there they are. Okay. And so students, rather than having you know a list of sites that they go around, they can just go right to this page, and they can share that amongst their group. Um, we're going to look at uh, this one we just did. 
And first of all, let's say I want to preview that site. And you can see it actually saves a copy of the website right in the Digo website, so, so you can look at it. If I go to About, it takes me to um, a page that actually tells me about that website, whether it's been linked to before, um, any tags that people have assigned to it, and it checks a lot of other sites like Technorati, Blog Lines, Delicious, to see if it's in there. Okay, we're going to get out of that. Or we can go to back to the preview, and you can see if I put, click on comment, it gives the part that I highlighted, it gives the comments we've had, and allows you to put other comments on. So that really, um, once you, you've collected a lot of sites, and students could send their links all to the same site, you don't really need to leave that site. You don't have to wander around the web, although you could do that. Okay, so that's how collaboration on Deagle works. The other nifty little option it lets you do is to... See, I've highlighted this site. Now, if I want to, um, because we've you know, learned about blogs now, I can go up there and blog about this. So I click on blog, and it gives me a very recognizable window, if you know anything about MS Word. You can see I've already set up my own blog as something to, to save to, or you, you can you know, add your new blog and it'll walk you through the steps. It gives me all the text that I highlighted, plus the comments. I'm going to delete the comments here. Let's say for my blog I'm going to add some text. Um, a really wonderful website for uh, media, oops, let's capitalize that, because we're important, media specialists, blah, 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 and I'm going to select my blog, and it gives me the option to either post it as a draft or publish it. I don't want to publish it, since this is just an example, so I'll post it as a draft and send. Now, if I actually go to my blog, and log in, look at my posts, you can see it's right here, and I can edit it, add things, give it a title, and actually post it to my blog. Okay, now one more little nifty thing it does. You can see we have a search bar here. So if I wanted to search, say, educational technology, Deagle would give me a lot of options for that. I could search the web through Google, Yahoo, Ask. I could search all my bookmarks, whether they're in Deagle, Delicious, Furl. I could search blogs. Um, I could go through news sites. Um, and so it gives you a lot of options for that. So let's say I'm going to search all my furl bookmarks for educational technology. And you can see it comes up with quite a few. Okay. And so that is Digo. Oh, I was going to talk about Digolette. I'm not really sure what the difference is on here, I'll be honest. But when I click on Digolette, you can see it actually opens up a little... Uh, browser, I mean a little toolbar right in the browser that pretty much lets you do everything except search. Okay, and I believe these are all also very cu customizable. So that, let's say if I go into Digo and um, click on options, you can see it has settings just for beginners, settings for advanced users, that are already preset, or you can set your own things. Like if you don't think your kids need to use, you know, the clip video tools, uh, they're not going to be posting to their blogs, uh, or you don't want them playing with options, you can delete those or unclick, unselect, deselect them. How's that? And hit OK. 
And then you can see those options disappear from the toolbar. Okay, so now that is Digo. I think it'd be a great tool to share with your teachers, with your students. They'll be impressed you're a real tech wizard.